Recently, the dark net popped up in the news again, both in local and national casts, headlining that some local resident or someone from a state resided in got arrested in a giant online sting operation. There were 150 people arrested, but that's only one casualty. There was something that was left out of the story that really impacts all of us. I'm Trip Elix, and this is the Insecurity Brief. This is the Insecurity Brief podcast. It features tech news and analysis throughout the world. This podcast is made possible through advertising and listeners like you. If you can't donate, please share this program. We depend on you. The Silk Road in ancient time was a pathway. It was a drug corridor. For centuries, police and governments turned a blind eye to the trade route. Many made fortunes, including one of America's political dynasties. The internet changed it too and impacted many facets of everyone's life. Back when Dread Pirate Roberts founded the Silk Road Marketplace and whether Ross Ulbrich was the founder or simply a player that got stuck holding the whole card, there were a bunch of hindsights made in the aftermath of the Silk Road. It was an online marketplace that used Tor and traded in Bitcoin, all in an effort to protect the site's lucrative drug trade. You know, one of the things about the, the internet and all of the things is that when you have a complete anonymous system, people are going to do what people do. When there's no police or no supervision, they're going to make a profit however they possibly can. The Silk Road still offered its enemies a single point of failure. When the FBI seized the seal the server that hosted the market in 2013 and arrested the alleged owner, Ross Albright. The FBI arrest and then arrested him and then operated the market. And there were others that were paraded in front of the news over the billion dollar drug bazaar that went offline. If one group of Bitcoin but one group of Bitcoin black market enthusiasts made their way and they made a free trade zone that could be much more elusive target. In Toronto, Bitcoin Hackathon in 2014, a group took away the $20,000 first prize with a proof of concept for a new marketplace known as Darknet, Dark Market, a fully peer-to-peer system built with no central authority for feds to attack. The hope was that Dark Market's distributed architecture would force law enforcement to go after every contraband buyer and seller one by one. That was a plan anyway, but its implementations went a bit farther and could signal a real problem for the rest of us. That was the idea of decentralization that was added to design and all fell apart when an Australian man, so-called dark market with more than 20 servers located in Ukraine and Moldova, were seized as part of an ongoing investigation of the user's illegal platform, Europol said in January of 2021. Radio Free Europe posted this in its blog entry January 13, 2021. The storage data will give investigators new leads to further investigation of moderators, sellers, and buyers, the European police agency said. An Australian citizen alleged to have 
been the operator of the dark market, was arrested near the German-Danish border. And around half a million users and more than 2,000 sellers used the website to sell illegal drugs, Confederate counterfeit money, stolen or falsified credit cards, anonymous SIM cards, and malware. More than 320,000 transactions were conducted via the website using cryptocurrency accounting to around $170 million. The German investigators led the international operation involving authorities from Australia, Denmark, Moldova, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, the United States, and Europol. Spin forward a few days ago, and in the headlines blazed on the internet and TV, Darknet Hunter, Huntor, they spelled it H-U-N-T-O-R, to push the Tor browser, puts 150 suspects nabbed, according to Europol. Police around the world arrested 150 suspects involved in the online sale of illegal goods of one of the largest puncture wounds in history, targeting the dark web. Now, this isn't anywhere near the uh, thing that happened to Silk Road. Silk Road was actually in the billions of dollars, according to it, back in 2013. Operation Dark Hunter also recovered millions of euros in cash and bitcoins, as well as drugs and guns. The bust is due to a German-led police destroying the world's largest dark net marketplace earlier this year. Dark Hunter consisted of a se series of separate complementary actions in Australia, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the United States, said Europol based in ha Hague. In the United States alone, Police arrested 65 people, 47 in Germany, 24 in the United Kingdom, 4 in Italy and the Netherlands. Many of the arrested were considered as valuable targets by Europol. Local agents also confiscated 26.7 million pounds, $31 million in cash and cryptocurrencies, 45 guns, 25,000 ecstasy pills and Italian police also closed the markets for more than 100,000 illegal product announcements. Deep Sea and Biscani, Europol, which coordinated the, operate, the operations with two judicial bodies. The point of such an operation is to notify criminals operating on the dark net, it means for law enforcement communities to remove the masks and hold them liable for their illegal activities, even in dark areas. We have a global partnership, the web. In Germany, German police closed the dark market online marketplace by Australian operators to promote the sale of drugs stolen credit card data and malware. So many of these report activities using Tor or the dark web is only for criminals. There are other uses for it and there are other reasons. I mean, the news and the disinformation don't like it because <laughs> they don't know who you are. They're the worst offenders, you see. When you go on the internet, they are, the news agencies are the worst offenders on the platform. In the, if you consider the internet a sea of information, the dark net represents, or Tor, represents an island of privacy. When you connect to Tor, they don't know who you are. When you connect to a news site with a regular browser, they're the worst offenders at tracking what you do. There are thousands of eyes on you. The New York Times, last time I checked,
still had a Chinese tracker recording your IP address and how long it takes you to read or stay on any given page. There's a company in Seattle that converts IP addresses to email addresses or your home address, but not so much when you use Tor. And cops are call, told to hate it. And the news tells you only criminals need to hide when anybody is that interested in telling you what you need to do. You should really question the authority. I'm Tripp. Until next time, have a great day.